Again, this webinar will cover a variety of challenges that may arise with the reorganization of local governments. We will look at the most current lessons learned from the Department of State's dissolution and consolidation projects over the past several years. <laughs> And we will discuss how best to prepare if a petition for reorganization is filed with your municipality. We will also discuss the requirements of Article 17A of the General Municipal Law, the enabling legislation for the reorganization of local governments. In 2010, New York State had 10,521 local government entities, including counties, cities, towns, villages, school districts, fire districts, and other special districts such as water, sewer, lighting, and garbage districts and many other special districts. There were, and still are, overlapping local government units, providing duplicative services, creating needless, wasteful bureaucracies. There is no contemporary rationale for this mess. It is a system that just grew. It all started with the Dutch in 1646, then the English, and with the creation of the city of Hudson in 1785, this act of the state legislature chartered the first city in the new United States. The method of local government creation has changed over the past two, last 200 years, leading us to the governments we have today. If we started over, would we do it the same way? Probably not. But it is a system of local governance we have. It is also a system almost nobody understands, least of all the people served by it. What does it all mean for the average taxpayer? New Yorkers have the highest local tax burden in the country. It dwarfs all other states and far exceeds the national average. In New York State, a person pays county and town taxes, possibly village taxes, school taxes, and taxes for special districts. There are also city taxes if you live in the city. To consolidate under the old laws, there were many inconsistent provisions of law. So, then Attorney General Andrew Cuomo proposed making consolidation of local governments easier, or at least simpler, and the Government Reorganization and Citizens Empowerment Act was enacted as a fix and make it easier for citizens to use and reorganize some local governments. Article 17A of the General Municipal Law created three ways to start the consolidation and dissolution process. By citizens, by towns and villages or special districts, or by counties. Prior to the adoption of Article 17A of the General Municipal Law, there were, there were what can best be described as a patchwork of laws outlining the processes to consolidate or dissolve the different forms of local governments. For example, towns followed Article 5B of town law. Villages followed Article 19 of village law. Fire districts followed town law sections 170 through 182. Fire protection districts, similar to fire districts, but only followed town law sections 170 and 183. For commissioner-run special districts, Article 13 of town law was the rule. The town special districts follow Article 12 of town law, and other miscellaneous districts had their own rules. Each of these laws had different requirements for the number of signatures on a petition, all depending on the kind of local government entity involved. 33% was required for villages, 50 for fire districts, 5% for towns. Signatures also expired after certain time frames, and in some instances you had to own property in the affected area. So in addition to providing uniform rules for the reorganization of towns, villages, special districts, special improvement districts, including library districts, Article 17A also authorized counties to abolish entire units of local government. This is subject to certain conditions, including a county-wide referendum with special majority requirements. However, like most things, there were unforeseen challenges. The law provides for the process of reorganization being initiated by a governing body or bodies or with a petition by the electorate of the local government or governments to be reorganized. This provides for the local governments involved to set the dates for a referendum and for the final reorganization date, whereas the old laws often dictated when reorganization could occur. Using the voter-initiated process, the electorate is held to a lower signature requirement than before. Quoting from the law, at least 10% of the number of electors, or 5,000 electors, whichever is less, 
in each local government entity to be consolidated, provided, however, that there were that where the local government entity to be consolidated contains 500 or fewer electors, electors the petition shall contain the signature of at least 20% of the number of electors. I will attempt to provide a quick overview of the two processes, so I will be going over this information a little quickly. With a board-initiated reorganization, the statutory process of reorganization only starts when the governing body passes a resolution endorsing a proposed reorganization plan. The reorganization plan is a document that contains the terms and information regarding dissolution of a local government entity. The reorganization plan will often require considerable data gathering, analysis, and discussion. To facilitate that process, the local governing body may want to designate an individual or group of individuals to examine the issues that may identify, be identified in the dissolution plan. The governing body may also want to seek public input as to the proposed reorganization plan is being developed. As long as the public hearing, long before the public hearing is required by statute. The basic items of a plan are the name of the local government to be dissolved, the entity to be reorganized, territorial boundaries, type and class of the entity, fiscal estimate of the cost of reorganization, a plan for the transfer or elimination of public employees, the entity's assets, including but not limited to real property, and, and the fair value of those assets. The entity's liabilities and indebtedness, bonded or otherwise, or the fair market value of the current money of the money. Any agreements entered into with local government which, in order to carry out the reorganization. The manner and means by which the residents of the entity will continue to be serviced with municipal services terms for the disposition of assets, including liabilities and indebtedness, findings as to whether any local laws, ordinance, or rules or regulations need to remain in effect following the effective date of two years, the effective date of proposed reorganization, the time and place or places for public hearings to be held on the plan, and any other matter they deem necessary. There are some differences between consolidation and dissolution plan. So please consult the actual legislation for the specifics of the required plan. With a board-initiated process, after the reorganization plan is endorsed by the local governing board, no later than five days after that resolution is the endorsed resolution after the resolution of the endorsed plan. The, resolute, the endorsed plan, along with a summary, must be displayed and made readily available at a public place. The plan and summary must be posted on a website, either that of the local government or on the village, town, or county where the entity is located. The summary of the plan must be posted in a newspaper of general circulation with, within, the entirety, entity, within the entity at least once each week for four successive weeks. With a village reorganization, most likely a dissolution, the plans must be mailed to the supervisor of the town or towns in which the village is located. There must be one or more public hearings on the plan to be held after 35 days, but no more than 90 days after the endorsement of the plan. Notice of the public hearings are made in a newspaper of general circulation and on the website 10 to 20 days before the hearing. After the final hearing on the plan, the board may choose not to proceed further or amend the plan and within five days post a new summary and plan at a public place and on the website. Within 180 days after the final public hearing, final approval of the plan must occur, occur by the governing board. For reorganization of a special district, the plan will take effect without referendum on the specified date within the plan. If the plan is for a reorganization of a town, multiple towns, town and village, or multiple villages, once the board approves the final plan, they must also call for a referendum. The referendum must be held at least 60, but no more than 90 days after the enactment of the resolution calling for the referendum. Notice of the referendum is at least once each week for four successive weeks prior to the referendum. If the referendum fails, the 
process may not be started again for at least four years. If the referendum passes, organization will become effective on the date specified in the plan. A certificate of the results must be filed with the Secretary of State and with the clerk of the entities and the counties. Now, that was simple. Let's go over the more complex process. Voter-initiated reorganization. The Act also provides for a petition process for reorganization. Unlike a board-initiated reorganization, a reorganization plan will not be developed until after the referendum passes. Now, if the governing body is unable or unwilling to prepare and approve a dissolution plan after the referendum, five voters who signed the original petition may bring a civil practice law and rules, Article 78 action, in state Supreme Court. Depending on the findings, the court may issue an injunction to find the governing body to act. If the governing body still fails to act, the court may appoint a judicial hearing officer to develop and approve a plan. Now, the process, the voters of a local government entity may file a petition to be submitted to the town clerk of the town or towns, or in the case of a special district, the town clerk of the town containing the greatest portion of the district. For a village dissolution, the petition must be filed with the village clerk. Now, you'll notice I've given a lot of different options because this law applies to all of these different special districts, local government entities. A valid petition must contain the signatures of at least 10% of the voters within the local government entity or 5,000 signatures, whichever is less. If the entity to be reorganized has 500 or fewer registered voters, then the signatures of at least 20% of the voters are required. Within 10 days of receiving the petition, the clerk must determine the sufficiency of the signatures and notify the contact person on the petition. Any voter who signed the petition can seek judicial review of an unfavorable determination. If there are enough signatures, the governing body must, within 30 days, enact a resolution calling for a referendum and set a date for the vote. The referendum must be held 60 to 90 days. The procedure for the public notice is the same as for the board initiated for petition. If the referendum fails, the reorganization process may not begin within four years. Now, there are two processes, consolidation and dissolution. If the dissolution referendum fails, you cannot start a dissolution referendum, but you could start a consolidation referendum and vice versa. If approved, the process continues. The law states that a certificate of results must be filed with the Secretary of State and with the clerk of the entities and counties. However, since this plan is not developed, and will be subject to permissive referendum, I'd suggest waiting until the deadline for the permissive referendum so the ref results of any permissive referendum is known before the filing of this certification. Within 30 days of a favorable vote, the board must meet. And within 180 days of that meeting, the local governing body must prepare and approve a reorganization plan, as outlined that I mentioned earlier. Within five business days after the reorganization plan is adopted, the plan and summary must be displayed and available for the pub in a public place, posted on a website, and a summary posted in the newspaper at least once each week for four successive weeks, and a time and date and place for one or more public hearing to propose a solution plan shall be held within, between 35 and 90 days after the approval of the plan. Again, the same public hearing notices as required as before. After the final public hearing, the board may amend the plan. If amended, a summary copy of the plan will be available within five business days. The governing body must approve the final plan within 60 days after the last public hearing. Now, the voters may, within 45 days after the approval of the final plan, file a petition requiring another referendum. This petition must contain the signatures of at least 25% of the voters, or 15,000 signatures, whichever is less. The clerk, again, will determine the sufficiency within 10 days of the receipt of this petition. If acceptable, within 30 days, the board must call for a referendum on the plan. Again, within 
No sooner than 60, no later than 90 days. Publication of the summary of the plan at, will be posted at least once each week for four successive weeks. If the plan is approved through this referendum, the reorganization will take effect as specified in the plan. Without a majority vote, this referendum will fail and the dissolution will not take effect or the reorganization will not take effect. The majority of votes using, the seven, using Article 17A have been for village dissolutions. And as you can see, elector-initiated referenda have been about a 31% approval. While board-initiated referenda tend to have more success than an elector petition referenda with about 50% approved, these numbers do not take into consideration those boards that looked at and chose not to move forward with a refer uh, resolution on the uh, reorganization. Now, some reorganized local governments will receive citizens' empowerment tax credit which is additional annual aid for the resulting local government. This is paid to cities with a population of less than a million, towns or villages following the reorganization. Payments start in the state fiscal year after the state fiscal year the reorganization took effect. That's confusing, but that's the way the law reads. This tax credit is equal to 15% of the combined real property tax levies by all of the municipalities participating in the reorganization in the year prior participating, in no case shall the additional aid exceed $1 million. For example, with the dissolution of a village located in more than one town, the formula is based on the average property tax levy of the town, and the credit is divided among the towns based on the percentage of the village population. 70% of the tax credit shall be used to reduce taxes. As an example, you can see how the remaining local government of these, of these two fictitious local governments with combined levies of about $825,000 would receive more than $124,000 in additional annual state aid if, in this particular case, if the village were to dissolve into the town. Reorganizations have been shown to save approximately 20% or more while well, household tax reductions have been up to 15% through general shared services. The level of service is often unchanged or increased through service cooperation or reorganization. One of the unanticipated driving forces behind reorganization is the lack of capacity to, to continue as a local government. In other words, you just can't keep, get people to do the jobs or there's just not enough money to keep whatever you're doing going. So what are the challenges? to reorganization. Based on our experience with reorganizations, we have listed a variety of categories these challenges fall into, such as timing, public, public boards, selective information, special districts, public safety, non-voting municipalities, tax assessment or reassessment, selling property, and employment issues. First of all, Timing is everything. Timing comes into play throughout the entire reorganization process. One of the major challenges is that towns and villages operate on different fiscal years. Certain special districts operate on different fiscal years. When trying to coordinate the transfer of functions and services, it can be awkward when there is a three to six month period where both entities are attempting to budget for the same function, or worse, a gap in services. Elections of governing boards can be difficult to deal with when coinciding with a reorganization event. The turnover, turnover of, a board, of board members during the process can influence the outcome of other votes, including reorganization. Board members can run on a platform either for or against reorganization. Then there is the issue of a reorganization where an entire new board would need to be elected before a reorganization can take place. This is particularly noted in a town-town consolidation uh, where you have two town boards, they would have to, uh, a new town board would have to be elected for the new town when it is created. You must still follow the election law in all, to elect all of these new board members. 
If a referendum is required, the actual date of the referendum can be a constraint. How do you schedule around holidays? How do you schedule around other elections? Your snowbirds? Any other or peak summer season? All of this can influence the number and type of voter that turns out to vote in a referendum. You'll also need to choose a date wisely to cast the widest voter net. That being said, remember, absentee ballots are entirely up to the local board to determine if they will be allowed for any referendum vote. The electorate, or petitioners, also need, also need to be concerned about timing. When a petition is filed, will when a petition is filed will dictate approximately when a referendum will be held, within 30 days or so. These same issues of voter participation would be a concern when filing a petition. Do the math, figure out when the date would be, filed, would be to determine when you might want to file a petition. Municipalities often choose a date of reorganization sooner than they should. We see this quite a bit. Um, often they just want to get things over with and are not thinking of many of the many things that need to unfold and that the legal process of reorganization takes time. Often special districts will need to be set up, employees need to be transferred, property needs to be transferred, new budgets need to be created, and sometimes new local laws need to be dealt with. We at the Department of State recommend at least a full year of preparation for the implement implementation after um, the final vote. Um, because these are no small tasks uh, for implementation, and almost everyone is unfamiliar with the process. The legal processes have procedures that follow strict timelines and often require many months between approvals and meetings. Finally, with a voter-initiated process, there often tends to be a sense of urgency, which can cause the process to be rushed. It is recommended that if there has been a buzz about reorganization, a board may wish to think about getting a reorganization plan together before a petition is filed. Sometimes the filing of a petition may be put off so the information on reorganization can be provided. Remember, for the voter-initiated process, the local government is under no obligation to do anything other than schedule the referendum. An analysis done by a local government prior to referendum is purely at their discretion. The public can be confused with the process. The reorganization process can be confusing if you don't deal with it every day, and most people don't. But then again, the general operation of government and the processes and the processes for the general operation can be confusing and often are to the general government, general public, and sometimes the boards. Misinformation can plague the reorganization process. There can be a lack of understanding on exactly what they are voting for. We've had residents call our office, ask for a final referendum, and ask, what is the process to stop the reorganization? Once the final vote is held, it is done. There is no mechanism in law to stop the process of reorganization. Residents usually have a strong connection to place and may vote with their heart rather than their head. The loss of identity can be a powerful thing. A possible government name change, fire districts consolidating into one, dissolution of a village, people think loses the official identity, even though the location remains the same and we have not seen a mailing address change. Sometimes the most vocal residents can forget that there are certain populations which are at risk, which are becoming, these at-risk populations are becoming more prevalent, especially with an aging electorate, and they may no longer be able to afford the cost of their local government. Our communities have diverse populations, and everyone needs to be heard, even if we do not agree with their view. We all know that politics can get in the way. A board-initiated process hangs on the members' votes to pursue reorganization and send the matter to a popular vote. But remember, boards are made up of people, and sometimes they vote with their heart instead of their head. Uncooperative, roadblocking, negative, divided boards are not uncommon in these situations. Some board members may block the process as much as they can, and even after a referendum to reorganized is approved. A board or board members may just not actually, may just not act to implement the reorganization plan, more or less walking away and letting others deal with the outcome. This has happened on more than one occasion in the state. A problem public official 
can also dis discourage the process. In a recent town-town consolidation effort, one board member was able to persuade the board to vote against moving forward with possible consolidation. And this halted an 18-month process. In that case, the electorate never had the chance to vote either for or against organization. In essence, the board decided, one board member basically decided what was best for the entire community without their entire input. Misinformation often sped, spreads faster than truth. Bad press usually results from ignorance or just bad reporting. Drawing inaccurate conclusions from the facts or not looking at all of the facts. Sometimes the facts are accurate, but there is an unfavorable tone to the presentation. Over -selective, overly selective or unbalanced reporting by the public and the press can be either for or against reorganization. Also, there are blurred lines between fact and opinion. Information on the dissolution process is often incorrect in the papers. Uh, this can be done because the process is confusing, as you just saw earlier, and sometimes a, a word here or there can make a change of an entire uh, article. In Princeton, New Jersey, there was a citizen group when they were looking at consolidating with the county. There was a citizen group that chose a script with pictures and verbiage that was meant to as a roadblock to their success. Specifically, um, we had a presenter who indicated that the script was kind of like um, uh, you know, killer script. It looked like someone cut the, all the script out of a newspaper block. It was a little frightening. Now, with special districts, remember, a reorganization of special districts does not offer a vote to the public. It is entirely up to the governing board. But with a town-town and town-village reorganization, special districts will often need to be established. These districts can include fire, lighting, sidewalk, sewer, water, EMS, etc. Upon a dissolution, a village dissolution, districts contiguous with the former village boundaries should be up and running prior to the dissolution. It often takes at least six months to form a new special district. And districts need to raise money through fees or taxes. But you cannot levy taxes on a January tax bill if the district does not exist prior to the adoption of a town budget in November. So in order for a special district to levy taxes for Jan in the January town tax bill, that district has to be created in a, probably by October or early November at the latest. So that process has to start at least six months or more ahead of time. There are also legal issues surrounding the transfer of service from a village to a new district. Required permits need to provide services such as water. They will need to be transferred to the town. There is also a responsibility, the possibility that a village or town is exempt from a regulation, but when it's transferred, when the transfer of ownership, that exemption may disappear. These things all need to be taken into consideration. Fire districts and fire departments are not the same. A reorganization of a multiple fire departments may require changes as to certain not-for-profit statuses. A reorganization of a fire protection district in consolidation with a new fire district may be the final outcome, but how, it, how that gets accomplished may be difficult. In one case, a village fire department that provided service to two fire protection districts were combined into a single fire district upon bill's dissolution. But with fiscal year issues and other time constraints, the simple method of doing this all at once was not possible. So they had to create a fire district in the area of the former village, then go through, then create, have the two special districts, two fire protection districts, and then once that was completed, they had to then go through a reorganization and combine all three into a single fire district. Police, fire, and EMS. There's no such thing as a police district. So, without special legislation, police jurisdiction must follow municipal boundaries. Currently, there's only one police district in New York State. The Port Washington Police District was created by the state legislature in 1933, and this was after five years of trying. 
Typically, police departments are discontinued or become town-wide police departments, or policing is expanded to the county sheriff's department, assuming there's a county road patrol. Public safety issues can be a sticking point due to the loss of jobs and a perceived loss of protection. Oh, you know, you've heard the stories, people will be murdered in their bed, die from a lack of EMS services, or everything will burn to the ground. Unfortunately, the reality is we just cannot afford everyone having their own paid police, fire, or EMS services. And volunteers play an important role in the provision of fire and EMS. But even that, even with that, the volunteers are becoming harder to find, and some localities are moving towards paid services. There may be union issues and, union issue, and unions may fight the dissolution process throughout a, the process throughout reorganization, but they can be brought on board. With consolidation of departments, the result will often be taking the best from each of separate contracts to create a new contract. In Seneca Falls, they abolished the fire protection district and merged with the Bridgeport Fire District to create one town-wide fire district, governed by the commissioners of the Bridgeport Fire District. The village department was absorbed within the Bridgeport Fire District, and the former Seneca Falls Fire Department was merged with the Red Jacket Fire Company. So these things do happen. It just may not the way most people think they would. Sometimes not everyone affected by the reorganization can vote in a referendum. Town residents outside of a village do not get a vote in village dissolution. However, when a village dissolves, there is no obligation for a town to follow the dissolution plan. If there had been a town village consolidation where everyone voted, the plan would have been developed by both the town and the village, and the town would be required to implement it as written. The sale of property that was factored into cost savings is not required to go towards those savings if a property is sold after the reorganization is complete. Also, a receiving government may decide to keep property that was proposed for sale. Confrontations may arise because government doesn't want to do what they want to take on the problems of another, and there may be very different operations due to the difference in public infrastructure. We see that a lot in that when water districts are consolidated, oftentimes one district has to spend a great deal of money upgrading their systems before the other a larger district will take it over. There are also DEC and DOH regulations unnecessary upgrades that can become challenging to a community that's never had to deal with utility issues. There are land use issues. Incorporation of zoning from one local government to another. They have zoning and land use protections when maybe another one may not have land use regulations. So how do you deal with that? If you've got regulations and you're going away and the new person doesn't. In certain instances, a reassessment of property will have to be done for the consolidation of certain local governments. In the case of a town-town consolidation, the equalization rates of each community are usually different. So a complete property reassessment would have to be done in each town to have the same equalization rate prior to reorganization. This is a requirement of the Real Property Tax Office. Local governments may have different ways to assess property. For example, there could be three elected assessors or one appointed assessor, each having their own way to do the assessments. This was particularly brought to light during the town-town uh, consolidation in uh, St. Lawrence County, where we found that the towns would have to completely re reavow both towns in order to move forward with the consolidation. With property disposal or transfer, you'll need to follow the legal process for selling goods and land. Property that is impressed with a public trust can mean parkland, land is used for public park or recreational purposes, as well as other property. There are restrictions on the sale of certain publicly owned property. For example, wharves, cemeteries, and parks are held in public trust and may not be diverted to other uses or sold without state legislative authorization. A public library building or firehouse may be subject to this public trust doctrine also requiring express state legislation before such property can be conveyed or transferred. Individual local governments would have to research these specific situations. Now, gifting of property can only be to another municipality, not to a not-for-profit entity. This can be an issue 
when wanting to transfer fire equipment to a not-for-profit fire department. A municipality can only transfer to a municipal fire, either a fire department of a municipality, whether it be a village fire department when the village would own the property, or a town, or a town fire department, or fire district, excuse me. Municipal vehicles and supplies will all need to be discussed during any, any organization planning. And then you've got your contract. Contracts and other items such as debt may need to be renegotiated prior to reorganization. Certain municipalities may have bonding requirements that uh, may not be met by another municipality, and they may not be able to transfer certain types of loans. Job loss is the biggest fear with reorganization, because often much of the saving comes from downsizing the workforce, whether it be through a dissolution or a consolidation. Now, transfers between entities can cause headaches due to differences in compensation, benefits, terms of service, and, require, and retirement benefits. Civil service laws have specific rules and regulations for the transfer of personnel. You know, specifically with police, is the police advisory board needed? Will there, need to, will there be a special list to be hired from, etc.? These employment issues need to be discussed with the local civil service office or the state division of civil service. Unions will play a major role at the negotiating table. Combining non-union and union departments may be challenging. But again, the best pay rates and benefits are often chosen during consolidation negotiations. However, unions may also set up roadblocks when there will be job losses, especially when dealing with police and fire departments. Now, those are most of our issues that we have, our challenges that we have laid out. Now, let me give you some examples from different organizations that we've dealt with. The town of Clifton and Fine. Now, these are the two towns in St. Lawrence County that I was talking about. The two towns already shared many services between the two towns. They shared a park, golf course, school. Uh, there were certain employees that were shared, uh, animal control, code enforcement. Uh, they also worked on their plows to get plowing together. So they, they did a lot of sharing already. Now, both town boards decided that they needed to look at um, how they could save money. So they chose to look at possible consolidation. Now, the towns worked together, steering through different committees. This is the, it took about 18 months to go through this entire process looking at each individual line item in the budget of both municipalities, working together to see how would they provide water, how would they provide sewer, uh, because they did have entities like that. Um, they also had, you know, how is the parks going to be contained? How are the highways going to be maintained? Every single division of provision of services was negotiated. The town did work together. There would be no loss in service and they did try to split the administration services between the municipal buildings in both of the existing towns. And any of the tax savings would be beneficial specifically to the people because uh, the town was, was getting a, and having an aging population. But they would have to reevaluate their, uh, redo their uh, tax assessments because their equalization rates were different. There was also one town had a substantial amount of uh, state property that had to be adjusted and that would have to be negotiated with the state on an assessment. The taxpayers in Clifton were shown to see a 15% decrease in their taxes. The taxpayers in Fine would see a 31% decrease in taxes. Delivery of highway services remain the same, basically. Uh, taxpayers would see a 3% increase in Clifton and a 5% decrease in county taxes, and that's just the way the equalization rates worked out in those particular areas, how once they go to a full value. There would be a reduction in full-time staff and a reduction in part-time employees as well. No vote was offered because the town of Clifton voted 3-2 to two against moving forward with the consolidation. So the electorate never got to vote on this particular case. Now, with the village of Seneca Falls, this was one of the largest villages to undergo uh, village dissolution, at least as per population. They also looked at sharing of services to find what would be the best way, whether it would, the savings would come more from dissolution or shared services. Um, 
in the end, they just uh, looked at a net annual savings of over $706,000 for the town village, um, and they did just look at possible savings of $8.11 for a thousand of assessed valuation in the village, and uh, that was a substantial amount. That's $800 per year, and a home assessed for $100,000. Now, the outcome was that this that the village did dissolve. All of the functions and services of the town became a town responsibility. The buildings and other assets, they were the village proposed to um, sell, give them to the town. Uh, and if they were unnecessary, they would be sold to pay off those debt. Uh, there was a fire district with two companies. Fire, uh, yeah, so, and they did want to create a unified zoning to maintain the areas. So the final count on the vote was, uh, was close. 1198 to 1112. So they did cease to exist on December 31st, 2011, and the impact was pretty much what they were, were saying. Uh, in 2012, the town tax rate went to $6.02, even though that's less than they had originally anticipated. Now, this was unique in that it was something different. Uh, now, the town did create a town-wide police force in this particular, uh, so. The village of Harmon, also in St. Lawrence County, uh, in 2000, 2014, the village of Herman, uh, the board, chose to look at what a dissolution of the village would be. Uh, they applied for a state uh, local government efficiency organization empowerment grant to complete the dissolution study. The grant application was funded, and the village organized a dissolution study committee comprised of town and village stakeholders. Uh, the village contracted with the development authorities in North Country uh, to assist with the committee with the, with the study. The primary objective was to develop a detailed dissolution study that answered the questions that village and town of Herman residents have about the dissolution, what the impacts would be, and how dissolving uh, might move forward. Now, the village did decide to dissolve, and they dissolved on December 31st, 2016, at midnight. The services inventory of the process after dissolution, uh, the mayor uh, the mayor and the board of trustees were, to, were abolished. The village property ta village tax village property would be sold or turned over to the town. Um, there was approximately a reduction of eight dollars and seventy five cents per thousand of assessed value. Now, this is a unique example in that there was a DEC permit um, that was needed when they transferred from the village to the town. Uh, this water withdrawal permit um, is now required by the town because when the village had their system, they were what would be classified as an exempt. Um, so now, uh, and just as an example, I'll, I'll read from the DEC regulations. Um, it's Article uh, 621.11C2. They require a new permit for the transfer of water supply system in the ownership. Now, they also, the DEC also raised this issue in another area, but they did not need to do this because their water withdrawal permit was less than 100,000 gallons, so they did not meet the threshold. And so this is an issue specifically with water systems that is, are being transferred. Uh, if there's a water withdrawal permit, you have to double check to make sure that the system is either uh, exempt or it will remain exempt. But the village of Herman, uh, the transfer of ownership, they triggered the new requirement for the new permit, so they had to do this permit before the village dissolved, and it was not easy to get it completed in time. Now, the village of Richville. The village of Richville is a little unique. Again, the board initiated the reorganization study in 2015 just to explore the benefits of a village dissolution. Most of the services that they were doing had already been turned over to the town of DeKalb. The village only had about $55,000 in expenditures in 2015. Most of those were for um, in their celebration budget for street decorations, 
and some parks and parks and stuff like that. So what they determined is if they were to dissolve, the town would pick up the costs of these things, and they would also uh, there were very few employees that had to be transferred. So they thought, you know, this would be good. Now, in this instance, it was a little unique in that the way the county taxes, county sales taxes were distributed. The county sales taxes given to the village were actually more than the village budget. So rather than to give the village this money, they, the county reduced the county taxes by that same amount. So the individual property owners were paying less in county tax than the general county rate. So because of the sales tax revenue being more than the, the, town, the village's budget, after dissolution, if they were to dissolve, that would have been eliminated. So suddenly, the village residents would be paying a higher county tax rate than they were before, even though there were no village taxes. The village dissolution in this particular situation would end up costing them money. So they chose not to move forward with that. So, But at least the village knows where their money is going now. They, the study was still of value to them. They were able to find out how the village would move forward with or without dissolution. Uh, so, you know, they're still keeping their youth program intact, which is one, which was one of their very important parts of their original budget. But th this is something very unique because counties provide sales tax revenue to municipalities differently in each county. It is a little different formula, so there's no one way to do it, one right, right or wrong way to do it. Now, the village of Port Henry in um, Essex County on uh, Lake Champlain, they looked at, they had actually done a dissolution study a couple times, uh, but they received a voter-initiated petition in 2015. So they held their referendum in, 2000, in October, and it passed by 19 votes. So it was very close. The village did end up dissolving in March 31st, 2017, and the village's residents are looking to save up to 45%. Uh, However, this was a, a little contentious because they, the village had done a plan four years prior to that, and they had determined not to move forward with the solution this time it moved forward. So this was a, a back and forth. Uh, one of the biggest concerns was fire protection, and this was one of those where I was talking earlier, where the village fire department create, was servicing two town fire protection districts. So in order to do that, they would have to create the fire protection districts and the district and then combine them into a single entity. It's kind of a, the only way they could do it. Uh, they had initially planned on creating a, ex, expanding the, creating what is called a town village fire district with the village and the town working together to, to encompass the areas of the village and the two fire protection districts. However, that did not get done in, in time before the village dissolution. So what, has to ha what had to happen was that the town had to create a fire district within the area of the village and then had to combine the two fire protection districts outside the village with those. Now, there was also an issue with this in that because the fire district was not created early enough, the town could, they would, they would at some point have this fire district. Uh, the village dissolved in March, and the village had already paid, had been paid to provide fire protection to fire protection districts up until July. So this was very confusing. So they had, so the town had to pick up fire protection for the district from July to December because they were not able to levy taxes for the new fire district that had not been created before they could levy taxes. So that was an issue there. And again, that goes back to trying to get things done in a timely manner. They just, the village originally had garbage pickup, which they disbanded, which they were able to get, oh, get from uh, a local company at a reduced rate to satisfy the concerns of the village residents. 
Um, and they were also the, the water and sewer districts. They had a joint system to begin with, but they had to create a new water and sewer district to, to allow for that. And then, uh, again, taxing for districts that didn't exist, uh, that was the issue uh, that had that, that worked out with the fire protection district and the fire district. The district wasn't created in time to create, collect taxes, so it was just um, a mess and trying to get that taken care of. And again, this village dissolves on March, uh, you know, at the end of March, so it, it was a confusing because the town fiscal year is January to December. Now, with the village of Keysville in, in Clinton and Essex County, it was in two, this particular village was in two towns and two counties. Um, they did vote, they did uh, dissolve the one village into the two towns. Um, the village government, in essence, and I hate to put it this way, they chose not to work as well as they could have with the two villages that would be accepting the, two, the, the, the village. Uh, so they just sort of walked away, uh, and that is an issue that you have to deal with uh, in certain instances with reorganization. Everybody has to work together. It doesn't always work. So there were issues of lack of maintenance. Um, there's some other public buildings. Uh, their water and sewer infrastructure was lacking in maintenance, and some of that was ongoing maintenance more than just from when they decided to dissolve. Uh, those many years of lack of maintenance that the towns had to pick up. Um, so there were some issues there. Now, with regards to that, we had um, with the water system, and I believe it was the uh, the water building. Uh, the day the town took it over, one of the towns got the water, one of the towns got the sewer because they were different ends of the, of the village. When they took it over, suddenly there was no heat in the building. There were no heat in one of the other buildings, so there were a lot of expenses that were incurred by the town that they had no clue was going to happen uh, with the water uh, system. The village had left the num amount of uh, chemicals and other items within the water facility down to the point where they had to special order stuff. Basically, the town took over and there was n the, the chemicals were no longer there to supply or maintain the system. So there was there was some issues with uh, taking over how these districts were uh, done. So, again, this comes back to the village, the vote happened, they decided basically, you know, we're done, let's just forget it. And it's been, it was, it's been almost two years and they're finally getting an even keel on the creation of the, the issues. Now, the town of Tupper Lake, okay, they are looking at Working, they've been working on consolidating the water and sewer districts. And again, I wanted to highlight this because it is just water and sewer districts. They've been working on this since December 2015. There's over 20 miles of sewer and 17 miles of water mains. There are 25 sewer districts and 28 water districts. So, and this is just within one town and they're all contiguous. So there was an issue of just trying to move forward and trying to get those taken care of. Just last week, the board voted to consolidate all of the debt-free districts, because some of the districts still had debt, and they will be consolidating those into the new single districts once those debts are paid off. But at this point, they'll be consolidating 17 sewer districts into a single sewer district, and they will be consolidating 21 water districts into a single water district. Um, this is very similar to what the town of Hyde Park did um, in, in, in they consolidated, but they transferred their function to the county, so the county was able to take over their things here. The town is just consolidating everything into a single district, uh, just is going to make their life easier. Now, I know, I think in both Tupper Lake and in Hyde Park, when they were doing the study to determine how best to consolidate these districts, they found out that they had districts that they, I know Hyde Park found out they had districts they didn't know they had. Uh, they didn't know the boundaries of them. They didn't know who was in them. Uh, so, I mean, just doing the study was uh, uh, something they were able to move forward. So sometimes you need to do these studies or to look at how to do just to find out, you know, what, what you're doing and where things are. Uh, but I'm not, I don't have a slide for this, but I know the town of Rye, 
was looking at uh, dissolution because but the town of Rye exists, and within the town of Rye there are, well, I was going to say two and a half villages that take up the entire square footage of the town. So the town basically is completely covered by villages and is bisected by the city of Rye. And uh, the town supervisor at the time, this was many years, several years ago, five or six, he said he was glad they did the study, even though they found they couldn't move forward unless they basically created new towns and made coterminous town villages. They were glad they did the study of looking at how to dissolve because they found out how they were spending their money. They didn't, they'd been just redoing their budgets the way they'd been doing them for years, and they had no clue. The town supervisor had no clue as to what some of the options that they were moving forward with. Now, we do have local government resources online uh, on our uh, website. We do have a organization, local government, uh, a four-page PDF, which is basically those charts in an expanded form that were earlier in the presentation, and you can go through those and see how those work. We have actually the Local Government Signatures Organization Empowerment Act, which is the actual legislation, and then we have it again in the summary process so that you can actually understand it. You'll notice the legislation takes 42 pages, and the how to understand it takes 21. So, and we also have the citizens guide to petitioning for local government. It explains how a citizen can apply or can petition, use the, the law to petition for the consolidation of two multiple towns, a, a town in a village, or dissolve a village, or have multiple water and sewer, water or sewer, or any other special districts consolidate. Uh, fire districts can consolidate through this also. Uh, we don't see a lot of petitions for fire district consolidation, but we do see uh, board resolutions to move forward with those types of um, processes. So I'm going to ship up a little early. These are our contact information, and hopefully I will get the questions here soon because I'm not seeing them anywhere. Uh, this is our Division of Local Government Services, 518-473-3355, uh, our council's office, our toll-free number, our email, and our website. Uh, our website also has contact information. You can go on our website and find um, uh, email addresses to all of the local government uh, services staff. So let me just check and see if we have any questions. I'm going to have to get off this page. I can figure out how to get off this page. Any questions? Oh, sorry. Oh, just that one? Okay. That's fine. Oh, sorry. Okay, I do have a question. Are there municipalities that chose to change their classification after one of these studies, i.e., did any villages try to become towns? Um, a village can become a a village it would have to become a town if they wanted to do so. They could consolidate with the town. If the town has no other villages within it and the village is located wholly within the town, in that particular case, a village could become what would be considered a coterminous town, town village. So, so 
and as far as I know, um, they nobody's actually chosen to change their classification uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, we do have had two towns trying to consolidate into a single town, uh, multiple sets of those actually. Um, many villages have dissolved. Some villages have looked at village consolidation with the town to become a coterminous town village. Um, but other than that, uh, it is something they can do because the law does allow you to change your classification. Um, however, the creation of a town is normally a function of the state legislature, so I'm not sure how that would work with this law. It's never been tested. don't know if it would work, so I couldn't be sure of that. Okay, actually, I see some questions here. I found the questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, you mentioned the community of Richville that had already outsourced most of its duties to another town. Is this a possible mechanism for slowly evolving one entity into another? In other words, can a community try by little, little by little to gauge the effect of consolidation? And the answer is yes. Um, Richville had already done this in the past. Uh, we have had a study of, uh, I believe it was Highland Falls in, I forget which county, it's either Rockland or Westchester. Oh. Um, they were looking at village dissolution, but they didn't think they would be able to do an actual village dissolution. So they were looking at how could they slowly move their services over to another municipality, to the town, little by little, to suddenly it's like, oh, we're not doing anything except paying for, you know, the government to run. Um, because uh, in many instances there are uh, village Villages were, I believe villages for the most part, were created because at the time towns could not provide services in a localized basis. That has since changed where towns can now provide services through special districts. So villages were created to provide those services, um, and now a lot of those services can be transferred to the towns where they were not able to do that in years past. Now that's, but some municipalities have chosen to try to outsource their, their, their uh, systems slowly over time. And again, you, you can gauge the effect, effect of consolidation like that. Okay, now we have a question of debt. Uh, it seems the issue of debt looms large for all of these endeavors. What have you seen that creatively takes this on? Um, in many instances, debt is an issue, especially with water and sewer districts, because those are uh, usually kept within those individual um, districts. Most of those would not consolidate until that debt is taken care of or at least relinquished so that you know, no other entity wants to take over debt. Uh, there have been some instances where some of the larger entities, I know the um, Onondaga Water Authority, Onondaga County Water Authority, is taking over some small uh, districts and their debt is so little that it's going to it's going to be a minimal charge on um, the other other people within the, in the county. Uh, I mean, it's like like half of you know one half of one percent or something like that of the total bill. Um, so that is an issue that can be done. Uh, the other option is, and debt should stay with the entity that incurred it. So, and but with a village of dissolution. Debt stays with the village electorate, the, the village residents. Uh, if, the, if a village were to dissolve, that debt stays with that village. In the same way, if um, most of the towns that have been looking at it have not had town debt, so that's not that, that's not an issue. But if a village dissolves and it has a million dollars of debt, that million dollars stays with those residents. It becomes a special district, and those get paid off over time. Another question. The issue of boundaries in special districts seems to present hurdles. Does the state offer ways to resolve these? Sounds like a lot of legal work created to create new out of consolidated old. And that is truly more efficient or is just consolidation for consolidation's sake? That is then a complaint of um, the dis village dissolutions and certain dissolutions of those types. 
where you're devouring a village which is taking care of all of these services. And now in order for the town to provide those services only in that specific area, they would have to create multiple special districts. It is, unfortunately that's just the way the towns have to do it. It does sound like it is a lot of legal work. And I'm not saying, it, and again, consolidation is something that the local governments have to look at to determine whether or not they want to move forward with it. If they don't want to create half a dozen extra districts, they don't need to do that. They don't need to move forward with the dissolution of the, of the village. Well, they don't really have a vote. But the village, again, it, uh, it, there is no way to, we're not really offering ways to resolve issues of uh, the district boundaries. So I'm not sure if I'm answering this question properly. So uh, again, it comes down to but this special district has to be created if you're getting rid of a village or some other entity, or you're just expanding. Uh, we've had multiple fire districts consolidate. We've had several fire districts, three or four of them consolidate into a single fire district, and they just spread the whole, um, they're able to spread the tax, taxes throughout everybody instead of sometimes they were doing them through special protection districts or whatever. So. There are ways to move forward with that. And again, I'm not really answering that question because I'm not sure it is one of those issues of uh, there, we do have to create new districts to create, to get rid of certain types of local governments. So there's, and again, I personally would like to see just efficient. Okay, another question. Can a town vote to dissolve a village that is wholly within it? No. A town cannot vote to dissolve a village. However, there's nothing to say that you can't petition the, the electorate within the, the – someone from the town can run a petition around in the village to submit to the village because villages are created by the village electorate. They're, the one, they're a very unique form of government, local government, and the villages are created – by the residents within that boundary, and they, and those residents within that boundary are the only ones that can dissolve that village. Now, there's nothing to say that a town can't try to consolidate with a village. Village dissolution is specific, and the village goes away, and all the services get transferred to the town. Village, town consolidation, town village consolidation basically does the same thing, but the village residents vote and the town residents vote on that. So if either of those group of people choose to vote against it, it's not going to happen. But perhaps, because village dissolution, just the word dissolution is a very touchy subject sometimes, so perhaps looking at a town village consolidation in that instead of, oh, we're going to make you go away, we're going to work with you to provide a more robust entity that will be the town village altogether. And again, like I said earlier, if you have a village that is the only village within a town, that village could actually expand to become a coterminous town village, like the five of them that there are in the state. And I shouldn't have said five because now I have to think about and try to remember all of them. Um, so that is something that can be done, but only if there's no other villages within the town. Okay, I'm seeing another question here before Chris gets back with that. What happens if two towns consolidate? Which zoning takes over or do they create a new zoning law? And how would the APA impact that? If two towns consolidate, their zoning has to be, that is one of the things that has, would have, would have to be addressed. Most likely, um, they would probably want to do a single comprehensive plan and then create a single zoning trying to mesh the two together. It can be done, but do remember that um, when with a consolidation or dissolution, um, the laws that are currently in existence are there for two years. So you would have a period of time within which to do that. I would suggest doing it ahead of time. And there's nothing to say that the two towns couldn't work together now to create a single 
comprehensive plan that encompasses both towns and a single, I'm not going to say zoning law, because you're each going to have your own separate law, but you could have the same definitions, the same districts, the same procedures, the same everything, and just have similar. So if you do move to go together into a single entity, you already have that. And, and that, personally, that's something I thought that would be um, advantageous for all towns and county, and counties to do is to have a single set of uh, zoning laws and definitions and almost have the individual municipalities choose from that list, uh, you know, almost like an a la carte menu. It's like, I'm going to have this zone and this zone and this zone. I don't have to have all of them, but we're going to use the same stuff. And how would the APA impact that? With regards to if there's a, a village, I know when Port Henry was dissolving, Port Henry, the, the the, the town of Mariah was in the APA, and the issue was how would uh, the village dissolution have, would that impact the APA? Well, the APA has already designated that particular village as a village uh, area, so that would not be subject to the APA regulations, at least that's what they told us at the time. And with regards to um, how the two towns, I would assume whatever the APA rules are, I mean, I'm unfamiliar with how that would work. But if, if the, just because the two towns were to consolidate, any rules that the APA has in one or the other town are not going to change. Um, you'd still have to recognize those uh, uh, within the towns, within the new town that is created, the single town. And uh, that was one of the issues. Um, this is, I didn't mention it before, but when the towns of Clifton and Fine were looking to consolidate into a single entity, uh, it was right up until they were, it was like, we're drafting the final plan, we're going to present this to the board, and then it was like, oh, well, what are we going to call the new town? You know, everybody, half the people assumed it was going to be called Clifton Vine, hyphenated, and everybody else said, no, we want a new name, so who knows. And again, I'm not sure how the APA would impact, but I'm assuming that anything that is currently in effect with the APA in any individual municipality would have to be within that new municipality. So, um, and I'm not seeing any additional questions come through, so if somebody has any, please send something. If not, I will stay here till about 20 after, and then we'll call it a day. Um, so... Okay. Is the material to look at about a coterminous town? Um, I just uh, we have some information here. There's some uh, on how to create a coterminous town. And uh, the local government handbook also has information on that. Um, if you wanted to, uh, actually, we've got your email address, so we can contact you directly on this. But um, we, I believe, you know what, I'm going to do something a little unorthodox here. Escape out of this. Go to here. Let's see if I can. not what I wanted. Let's go to General Counsel. I believe, no, that's not what I want either. There is a council's opinion on coterminous towns. There is a thing on, um, in our, on our website from our council's office on 
uh, coterminous towns, and I don't seem to be able to find it right away. I can look for that and send that out to us and let everybody have a copy of that. I'm seeing another one here. Question. Two neighboring towns, one where I live, are sharing dump services. Senior services, rescue service. Is this a subtle start to consolidation of towns or merely simply sharing of services? Um, to be honest, I would say uh, that is not unusual. Many towns share multiple services. And again, don't forget, most uh, school districts cross municipal boundary lines. Uh, EMS can cross municipal boundary lines. Um, senior services, depending on, uh, it's going to depend on your town. Uh, if you're Town is of the is um, perhaps they're unable to provide those services in an efficient way by themselves, so they're just sharing with another municipality. We see a lot of municipalities just sharing services because they can't afford to do it themselves, so they can do it better with somebody else. And it's not necessarily a looking at consolidation. Uh, I happen to notice that you're in, in Essex County, but I have to be perfectly honest, I've never heard of anybody looking at sharing or, or consolidating towns in Essex County. I do know that they're looking at. Uh, or rescue services at EMS, but um, and that's a little a little uh, bigger project than that. So, oh, oh, someone might have found what I was looking for. Ah, what is Coterminous Town Village? Legal Memorandum 6. And there's a link here, so if anybody was looking for that, if they want to copy down that link. Okay, so that explains what a coterminous is and pretty much how to create them. That's our legal memorandum six. There we go. So thank you, John, who found that for us. So that is here also. Anything else? Again, my contact information is on our website, as with everybody's contact information. If you need it, if you go to Local Government Services, and down here, Contact Local Government Services, it's got all the contact information and all of our pictures and all of our emails. You can email us directly um, if you have any questions. So uh, please feel free to do that also. So if there are not any other questions, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we're good. So at this point, I will say we're finished with our webinar, and I will be logging off shortly. I'll keep it open for a few more minutes, but if everybody wants, anybody who doesn't want to be here can go for it. Okay, thank you very much.